All right, welcome to another episode of AJ's Green Thumb. It is Monday, June 29th, in the thick of summer. I think today's high is 95 degrees. You're probably wondering why you're planting right now. It's a relatively shady area back here, despite me being in the sun right now. But this shall pass pretty soon. Um, so this sun will make its way past this point within the next hour or so. So this area gets about, I don't know, probably four and a half to five hours top of sun and straight sun I would say about a good hour and a half to two hours so today I am planting up a new area right behind me I've got I'll start with the tall and work my way down to the short so I've got uh, a winter sown Rose of Sharon in the back that's in that um, milk jug um, right next to it, I've got a mammoth elephant ear, and um, that's not a perennial, obviously, so it'll die down, and so I just needed some kind of weighty plant material in that area while the Rose of Sharon takes off. Then I've got a small drift of winter-sown um, lavender right here. And over there in the shadier area, I've got um, some flocks. It's called Peacock White. Those should get to be about probably two feet tops. And in the foreground, I have uh, three salvia blue better, um, which are also winter sown. And in the very front, I have um, three salvia that are most definitely perennials and it's like a real crystal blue in color so I'm gonna go ahead and slam these in the ground real quick and um, prep the area after I'm done with uh, cardboard and mulch and uh, see how it looks in the end all right So all of these items right here, I'm not even going to amend the soil. I think all I'm going to do is um, put down some Espoma Biotone Starter Plus. I don't dig a hole without it. So I'm going to start with this elephant ear over here. Now the elephant ear, I may actually amend the hole with some um, black cow manure now there's no telling what I'll run into as far as roots and um, rocks and so on and so forth so this will be a surprise to me just as it is to you I think I have a root already, speaking of. So when I encounter these roots, which there are many because this is a mostly shaded woodland garden, I just adjust. I mean, I move over a couple inches or feet even if I have to. So for an elephant ear, you kind of want to go down at least six inches. And for a mammoth elephant ear, such as the one I'm planting right here, you want to go down probably seven or even eight inches.
so I'm already down like six inches. And I like using this narrow spade because it's more precise and it cuts deep. Notice I said it cuts deep. Not necessarily dig, but it cuts deep. Okay, that was fun. <laughs> so for a bulb that size, that's plenty, two handfuls. I tell you, there's all types of um, wildlife around here and to understand that I'm in the city. To understand that I'm in the city, I tell you, with all these noises around here of wildlife, you find it hard to believe that I'm in a city. Well, a suburb city, Clinton, Maryland. All right. So I've got the hole dug. I put in two handfuls of black cow manure and a generous amount of Biotone Starter Plus. And so another thing I want to put in there is some Epsom salt. It helps with transplant shock as well. That's it. Now, I potted this up uh, probably about a week and a half ago. a relatively untouched area so when you're planting in an area that has um, been relatively untouched or heavily cultivated you're gonna find a lot of uh, plant debris and tree debris and so I'm encountering a lot of that you're gonna get stones and rocks and all of that so I'll just discard all of that later. All right, so that's planted. 
and I'll put a generous amount of um, black cow manure around it. Oh, spilled a little there. Because I'm pretty sure that these elephant ears are heavy feeders due to their origin, which is the tropics. And I know the soil is very rich and full of nutrients in the tropics. So this generous amount of um, manure mulch will come in handy. All right, time to plant the Rosa Sharon. So this Rose of Sharon is gonna easily get probably eight feet, probably two feet taller than the six foot fence. So I know the spread is gonna probably be about five or six feet easy. So I'm planting it about two and a half feet away from the fence. So I know some of it, some of the foliage and so forth will push against the fence, but that's fine. Um, I'm okay with that. I'll just prune accordingly when it comes when it becomes mature. See over here I'm getting a lot of rocks. And it feels like some roots too. Obviously, I prep a really big hole or wide hole. I always prep the size. I always prep a hole that's the size of the container and then just a little bit wider so that the roots will have a head start uh, when they start to push out. So here's a root right here. So I'll just back up a few inches. Okay, so for this, I'm not gonna put any um, extra nutrients besides the biotone starter. Because Rose of Sharon, they don't like heavily nutrient soil. This thing has been in here about, I don't know, probably four months. Way too long for winter sown plants. So I do expect to see um, a good number of roots. I'll be surprised if I don't. Well, it's a decent amount. A decent amount of roots. Actually, in this milk jug, I tried to winter sow about four and ended up getting two. And the other one shriveled up on me. Um, when I left it, it's a little bit too dry. So I want to plant this as straight up as possible so that it grows that way. Okay. Let's plant.
plant number two, Rosa Sharon. All right, so I'll work with these uh, flocks over here. I've got a lot of red ants, big red ants over here. I think I disturbed the mound earlier. This area over here was covered with this big piece of cardboard. And um, it was like, I guess, it, I guess I'd covered an ant mound. I assume. <laughs> so if you see me hop, skipping and jumping over here, then you know why. Because they're tearing my ass up. So this has been a little relatively easy to dig, obviously because the holes aren't that big, but it's kind of surprising being so close to a, a trunk of this huge, what is this? Oak? Yeah, it's surprising. So, with these plants, I'll put a little bit of uh, black cow manure in there. That's my guard dog, Boomer. He's a schnauzer. Not a miniature, but a, he's a schnauzer. Nice healthy roots. Tease it just a little bit. I don't go crazy with it. Set it in the hole. There's that. I 
I should have the rest of these planted up within the next half hour. There's a root. I water these in real good. The good thing about flocks, besides their beautiful fragrance and flowers, is uh, that, well, these is that they're perennial, so they'll delight me with uh, their beautiful presence year after year. All right, top dress these a little bit. for continuous feeding. Okay, on to the next. So these lavender, I'm not even gonna, well, I will use a little biotone. I'm not gonna do them like that, but they really don't need much Actually, I winter sown these um, in 2019, and um, they overwintered well. I actually left them in the carport um, during the winter, so I top dressed each of them with a bunch of um, gravel, which is good. And they're planted in a very sandy mix. So, and then I also plant them a little higher too. So with lavender, you gotta be very careful not to have them sitting in too much moisture, hence the gravel, hence the gravel base and um, You want to plant them a little higher too so if it does rain heavy they're not sitting in a lot of water so like this right here is perfect no need to baby it at all i mean that's it goody a piece of hose what other surprises will I find under here so 
that a hose clamp? Not sure it was back here before, but hmm, interesting. Notice with these lavender, I'm just planting them one at a time. There's a few uh, fine roots in here. When you're planting, you want to make sure you get at least out of the hole. Anyway, you want to get rid of as many roots as possible so that your plant won't have to compete too heavily for um, water and nutrients and such. So don't just throw your plant in there with all this extra stuff, like roots or whatever, because It'll be a struggle to um, to settle into its new home. Okay, there's a second one. Very rustic garden, obviously. So, as you can see, I left a little pathway. I mean, obviously this um, Akuba is gonna get pretty large in five to 10 years. But in the meantime, I left a little pathway. So for maintenance and so on and so forth, I'm able to kind of just walk back here into the bed. So always keep that in mind when you're prepping your bed or planting out a bed. You always wanna save some space for access. This one already has some blooms on it, so I made sure to put it in the front. Oh, lovely. I'm pretty sure all that birdie is telling its friends is, hey, that fool's digging some more holes, so you know what that means for us, food. So they're just peering above, waiting impatiently so they can come eat. All right. So I'm gonna shift gears and move over here. And I'm not even gonna put any cow manure in here either. Salvia kinda likes it to be uh, just average soil, nothing too fancy.
I can't help it. I'm a distracted gardener. Oh, we got a casualty, a worm. Just got doused with all of that, uh, all those additives. Sorry, buddy. I really hope these winter sown suckers really take off. I'm just gonna have to pay attention to their watering within the next few weeks. Lots of roots, so that's a good thing. So notice with these um, smaller perennials, I tend to plant in odds and odd numbers. So groups of threes, fives, um, if I have it, seven, nine, even though that kind of, that figure of nine, it kind of looks like, a, like an even number. But um, yeah, if you can, definitely do that because it's a more striking effect to have groupings when you're planting perennials. Shrubs, you could kind of do onesie twosies depending on how big they get, but I find with perennials, you should definitely bunch them up in threes or fives or sevens. Just an odd number. Oh, there's a little hitchhiker. Get out of there. Try to get it out of there without damaging the delicate winter sown plant. And you know, it's funny I say that, but winter sown plants actually aren't that delicate because They've already been acclimated to your environment. So, I mean, <laughs> they were buried in snow and freezing rain for like three, four, five months. So they should be just fine, just fine. All right. All right, what's going on? 
Sandwich. Okay. All right. After this, that's it. Take me a break till the evening. What's going on? That it is. It pays to be in the shade. It pays to be in the shade. And it's this hot. So these crystal blue salvias I actually got as mail order. And it's a real pale crystal blue. Hope I'll be lucky enough to see it bloom this season. Uh, give me a second. left us a gift. So yeah, I'm getting, um, yeah, I'm getting a couple trees taken down. Um, that Stan had mentioned. Uh, we had a heavy rainstorm and then a windstorm that followed not too far behind. And so uh, I'm getting uh, a tree contractor to come out here and take them down. So obviously that one way back there that you know of, that's coming down. And then this one back here along the fence, that's number two. Number three is that big one in front of you that's, um, it has an odd feature. It's like practically hollowed out. And um, when I first purchased the house, I was under the impression that that thing was gonna fall any, any day but um, it lasted a whole season. But it's gotta go because it's too unpredictable. And then the little spruce, that's coming down. The little blue spruce that's over by the drain, that's coming down. So that's a total of four. Hey, it's a dangerous job. It's not something that, uh, you know, I can take down without worrying about um, damaging any residential property like my neighbors, you know. Their fence is right there. They have, they have a shed right there. Um, so this is going to be a very delicate operation. So... I'm looking forward to them all getting taken down. All right, so it's been about a half hour, like I said, and I got all these in, in their new homes, and time to water them all in, and then apply the cardboard, like I said, and mulch it in. All right, that's 
it. Clean up a bit. Lay down my cardboard and mulch. Hmm. Could probably sell some of that wood. Which one? Oh, it's half of it's down, not the whole tree. Half of it's down. The more important part is, is what's sensitive that needs to come down. That's the sensitive piece. Uh, hopefully they can discard it. I mean, they'll, they're getting paid to discard it, so I'm hoping they'll take it with them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if I had the camera guys, I'd show you, but yeah, it's a it's a really it's really an oddity. It really is. All right, so just water everything in generously. Starting with this elephant ear. On a hot day like this, I let the hose run for a little bit. say water it in I mean water it in real good those who know me know that when I plant something it's getting watered in <laughs> it is really getting watered in plants I water in the surrounding uh, root zone so that encourages the roots to branch out for more water I was seriously contemplating planting this Rosa Sharon I mean I, I was really looking for a spot in this garden to put it so I'm glad to actually found this spot. So you're probably asking, what about all the grass? What about all the weeds? I'll show you in a second what I do with all of that. And it works just well.
tell you one thing, it smells really beautiful over here. Like somebody's taking a bath with all of this Epsom salt. It's another reason I gotta make sure I water it in really well so nothing gets burnt. I'm gonna have to put a stake over by that elephant ear, by that bulb, until it starts to uh, push out growth. Because I could easily see that as a casualty. So water this in really good, make sure there's no air pockets, um, make sure all the soil settles around the roots, and um, due to planting in such hot temperatures, hopefully the plant really appreciates this extra hydration and uh, takes off nicely. And I have to admit, out of all these plants, I'm really hoping this Rose of Sharon takes off and rewards me for years to come. All right. Here's the fun part. Cardboard. I forgot I had planted some zinnia seeds over here, so I better keep this area moist. So I saved the little pieces for like in between the plants.
I'm actually going to double up on this walkway here. Double up the cardboard. I know it's pretty crude looking, but it's just another form of mulch and it really works. broke off. It's just mulch. It's just mulch and it's used to suppress any vegetation. Grass, weeds, I mean whatever. It works. It's all biodegradable. I take as much of the um, tape or adhesive off of the cardboard as possible. And um, it works. So yeah, it'll be a little puffy for a couple of weeks, but with enough rainfall and so on. And